Hello adventurers! Today we're going to do some adventuring in home decorating and woodworking. Since hardware is so expensive, I decided that I could build my own shelf bracket using some 2x2s. And then I had some leftover 1x12 pine boards. So 2x2s and 1x12 is what I'm using. You could, if you don't want your shelf to be as wide, you could use a smaller board like a 1x8 or whatever width that you want for your shelf. And this will go on the wall here, and then there's another one that will go here, okay? So here's my bracket, and this is just made from two by twos with 45 degree angle cut. So I used a miter saw to make those cuts, okay? And then I used some wood glue and some screws. I The shelf will be sitting on top. So what we need to do, what I've done with, with this shelf first, is you notice that I stained one side of it. I still have to do the other side. The other side is raw wood. So I'm staining the, the top shelf white, and I'll go show you that process here in just a second because we have to do this side. And then I'm also going to stain these, but I wanted these to blend in and not stand out quite so much against the wall. So I will be staining those a walnut color. So let's go out to the garage and talk about staining. I wanna talk about our angled pieces, um, our shelf brackets, and how to be sure that you get those measurements and those angles correct, okay? So what I did was I started with this piece. So you see, I have this scrap piece uh, sitting around. So I'm gonna use this as, uh, pretend this is our original before we've done any cuts. So what I did was I laid it out across here and then I, I drew roughly where my angles needed to be. So I just made a line here and a line here. They didn't have to be exactly 45 degrees because your saw will take care of that. You're gonna set your miter saw at 45 degrees and it will cut, but you just need to know it's a visual so that you know which way to lay your angle, okay? So once you have your bottom piece cut, then I did the same with my top pieces. I, wor I worked here and said, okay, I know I'm, I'm gonna to need to cut that way, but what does my cut here need to be? So this one's a straight across. We just draw a line straight across. And then you would do the same as you're doing your angles here on the side. You just wanna draw which way your angle needs to be so that when you go to put it in the saw, you get it right. So really, no matter what the width, I've got a shade here, let me turn this way. No matter what width we decide on, you're just gonna take your original piece, lay it out, draw in about where you want your angles. You just need to know your end points is what you need, okay? Pretty easy, you do have to have that miter saw. Without a miter saw, that's nearly impossible, so I wouldn't attempt this project without one, unless you can possibly get the people at the home improvement store to cut for you. But you'll have to know your measurements. So let's talk about staining now, okay? So we have our, we have our two shelf brackets. Let's look at our products. I have this, uh, I had this from another project, so I decided to use this white to do the shelf. This side is, is done with two coats. This side we are going to stain. As you see, it's, it's still natural, so I'm gonna put a stain on that. This one is going to need some kind of protector. So I have uh, this I had laying around the house from a previous project. Normally when I protect wood, I would use a polyurethane. Uh, polyurethane will yellow this stain. Since it's white, we don't want it to look like old yellow stain. This is clear and will not do that. So I'm going to use this to seal it off. For my shelf brackets, I'm going to use this stain, which is an American walnut, so it's a little bit darker. And this is a one-step stain. Let's talk about what I've already done. With white, you wanna really be careful because you'll be able to see drips and lines, so you really have to be careful that you're wiping with the grain, so you'll see that when I'm doing that. This has two coats, which I put on last night, and it's, it's, not, all the, it's not usable yet, but it is dry. So I'm going to turn it over Notice I'm, I'm supporting it just so it gets a little airflow and doesn't get scratched. And let's start with our, our white stain. If that works better for you. Just dip it in there and then make sure we're wiping with the grain of the wood, okay? And you wanna be pretty generous here in putting the stain on because it's going to soak in and which is what you want it to do. You want your stain to soak really nicely into that wood, okay? So we're gonna lay it on kind of thick here where you wanna be careful is at your corners because you see it can be easy at the corners to get this messy brush look. So you wanna go all the way back and forth, okay? All the way back and forth.
we've got our staining, our first coat here. We're going to let that sit about five minutes and then we're going to wipe off any excess, okay? I also want to mention, um, which I haven't brought this up yet, was that I did do a sanding, a light sanding on everything just so that we have nice smooth finishes, okay? So make sure that you have some sandpaper around. You, can, you don't have to get crazy with it, but you can see here on the corners, I've sanded down some of the <clears throat> sharp edges and made it a little more soft. And then I've sanded the fronts and backs too. So make sure you do that before you stain, not after. Unless one thing that you can do is if you find if you get drips or something somewhere, you can sand those down and that will kind of take off those high edges and those drips. So we're gonna let it sit for just a few minutes and then we'll wipe off any excess stain that we have. I'm using a t-shirt here to wipe it on, but you can use a brush or you can use um, a sponge. Really, there's a lot of options and on the can, it explains to you uh, what your different options that you might want to try. So we're just gonna wipe this on. We're going to put our sealer, our clear acrylic sealer, onto our wood project so that we can have it protected. And this way, this won't rub off or become water damaged or something. Also, I've got under here my, my white board. Um, so we're going to spray that. And it's important that you move away from anything that you might get overspray on. We've got all the stains done on both pieces of wood and it's all sealed so it's ready to go to be connected. So what I did first was measured in five inches top and bottom because that's how far in I want to put my uh, shelf supports. See five inches we've got here and then I made sure to line up the back right here because that's where we're going to screw into the wall. Okay, so step one 
in attaching is we're going to go ahead and just make a couple of light pencil lines at the measured out area. Okay, and then when we remove that, we can see we've got some lines there where they go. And I'm going to place some wood glue right in that line. Now I don't have clamps that will fit around here. You might, which if you do, that's, that's excellent. You should definitely use those. I do not have those, so I'm going to put a heavy can of beans here in the little triangle to hold that down. We'll do the same thing on this side. Put a thin glue. Okay. We're going to let that sit for a few hours before we actually put a screw in. So normally I would put the screws in at the same time that I do the glue, but this is an awkward angle. So if I flip it around, I don't really have anything to set it against that will give me the pressure to hold the uh, frame onto my show. Our glue, let me come to this side so you can see, the glue has dried up enough that we can move and, and manipulate our shelf without things falling apart. So um, now it's time to put some screws in to the shelf. And you see I've done two here. Um, I had a little issue here. I'll be sanding that down and kind of fixing it up. But you see I've done two of them. And so on this side, here's a little mark. You, you may not be able to see that. It's pretty light. Here's a little mark for a pilot hole and here's one also. So you wanna be sure that you go in straight because we don't really have a lot of room for straying. Also, if this bothers you, you see I countersunk this one just a little bit. You could put a little wood fill here, sand it down, and then put some stain on top of that. And if you want to do that, you may wanna to wait to do the stain on the top part of the shelf until you put these together, and then you can put the wood fill in and you won't have to see the screws. I'm not worried about seeing the screws because where my shelf will go, you will never see the top of the shelf. So I'm going to leave them like this. So let's drill, let's drill some pilot holes. about right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to try to put a screw here and here and here and here. Okay. So that's what we'll do next. Um, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do a pilot hole. I'm probably going to get a level, make sure I've got this hung level. So I'll get a level, uh, drill a couple pilot holes, put some screws in. So I'm screwing into a wood wall which makes this very convenient for me because the screws will grab into that wood and hold. If this were drywall, you would want to know where your studs were. And if you could find a stud um, to start like here, I would assume from these nail holes that this is a stud um, and that's how they've attached this. So I know that I can get my, my board about there. So I will go ahead and screw into that because I'm, I'm assuming that that's a stud. Um, but I'm safe to make an assumption because I have a wood wall, but you wouldn't want to make that as an assumption with uh, drywall. If you have drywall, see if you can find a stud and then screw one into the stud and the other, uh, use a drywall anchor of your choice. It's good. It looks like our bubble's right in the middle. Perfect. Let's go ahead and screw in this other side. And this, the purpose of this video really is to show you that even if you don't have everything, that you would need if you are professional, that you can still be successful with building. I mean, these screws are not what a contractor would tell you to use. 
Um, they would uh, try to find some brown ones. I kind of like them because it's next to the plants. So I think I'm going to keep them green. Um, you could change them to a brown screw if you wanted or, you know, put some wood fill on there. I'm, I'm going to embrace the rustic look and, and go with what we've got. Um, I've got my little temporary bookends with my little rabbits. Um, I may just leave them there. Um, they, they look really cute, I think. And my little plant on the side. And now we have a nice shelf that matches the rest of what we've got going on here. Okay, so here's our finished product. Looks quite nice, I think. So I hope you I hope that you have enjoyed this video. The purpose of the video is to show you how no matter what your skills and with a few tools, you don't even need very many, you can make something beautiful for your home with whatever you have around. Hope you've enjoyed watching the video. Um, please subscribe, it really helps.